Good afternoon, everyone. So, it's one of those days where I spent a long time on the computer. It sucks, but I was doing editing for Road Syndicate, which doesn't suck. Nice getting those things done. So I finished another video, and it will probably be up by the time this vlog is up. So I will link it here, and it's on the, yeah, Ford Fusion a few weeks ago. A little bit behind, but that's okay. I think it turned out pretty well. Let me know what you think in either of these comments or that comments. Anyways, I'm going to do some stuff I haven't mean to do, like get my room organized because that couch is against the wall. And there's still cables everywhere. I'm going to get to that right now. So I spent all day editing footage and catching up on some things and it's really late now. I didn't really get out on any adventures or anything. Well I was cleaning some stuff up, I came across something that I haven't talked about on the vlog yet. Let me go grab it. So this, this is kind of what started everything. It's It started, I don't know what it started. It started a lot of stuff. Um, this is what I call the energy harvesting ring. There's actually two in here. And the interesting story about this ring is that when I was working at Honda, I kind of, I don't remember exactly how I came up with the idea, but basically I had this thought that it'd be cool if you could harvest body heat and produce electricity. And when I had this idea, I actually had no clue how to do it or if, if it was even possible. Yes, it's possible. And yes, I figured it out wasn't that difficult to figure out but the concept is really interesting so basically this ring when you put it on like so it's a two finger ring so that it gets a little bit more heat transfer from your hand and this heat sink here actually dissipates heat and there's an element in here called a Peltier tile and a Peltier tile creates electricity through a temperature differential and then this whole circuit here takes the small voltage, which is only about 0.2 volts from the Peltier tile, and eventually will build that up and produce enough voltage to make the LED glow. So with this ring, why did I start it? Well, interestingly enough, it was a competition to see who could be the next intern for Mythbuster Adam Savage who's like an amazing creator, he can build almost anything. Huge influence on me for sure. And uh, I thought this ring would be a really cool submission to that competition. But as it turns out, you had to be American, and I am Canadian. Even though I was working in the States at the time, I don't think I would have been able to enter, I didn't even try. But this idea was stuck in my head so much that I had to do something about it. So I started researching how to actually generate energy from heat or temperature and it took a long time. I don't actually know the whole timeline. So when I created the ring it was a new concept, a really interesting demonstration. Definitely a proof of concept because it generates so little energy nothing's really usable on it. But what happened was kind of unbelievable. Well, first, the ring was featured on Hackaday, a website that 
I frequent all the time. It's just where people make electronics and they hack things and they build things. Really great website. I'm pretty sure it was featured on there first. And then sometime after that, I received an email from Popular Science. This like blew my mind. I've had a Popular Science subscription I want to say since I was 12, I'm not sure. That's what I tell people. It might have been before, it might have been a little bit later. There's popular science all over my room and they wanted to put my ring in Popular Science magazine. I couldn't believe this. And it was, I don't know how to describe it. It was unbelievable. So basically, I think a month went by and I did a phone interview and they interviewed me and then either the next month or the month after that I had my own article in Popular Science magazine. Right here. Carrie actually made this for me. So it's in the magazine and it's online. And then what happened from there was I got contacted by a company called Wearable Technology. And they do these really huge wearable tech conferences where these new companies show up and they introduce their cool technology. And wearable tech was the big thing for the year that I designed this and made this ring. So they invited me to do a talk at one of their conferences which was, again, mind-blowing. I thought, I had no idea how big this conf conference was going to be, and basically I just, they just said, come down, talk about your ring, talk about yourself, and I'll go from there. So I think it was, so last year, 2014, Wearable Tech Conference in San Francisco. Amazing. And here's a little story. So we, me and Carrie, we went to San Francisco. I brought Carrie with me. And showed up at this Wearable Tech event. And it was way bigger than I was expecting. It was huge. When we, we got there, the conference was on Monday, I believe, or Tuesday. We got there Friday night. That weekend, I don't know if I got something on the plane or it was like just the traveling, I got extremely sick. I think I had the worst cold or flu or something I've ever had in a very long time. It was definitely the last time I've even been sick. It was horrible. So as the weekend was going on, I just started feeling worse and worse. I didn't know what was going to happen. so. I think it was on Tuesday, Monday night, I had a rehearsal talk, I showed up, I couldn't, it went terribly, everyone thought it was okay, but for me, it went absolutely terribly, I was like, you know when you get those shakes, you're just like, not nervousness, like, my body was shaking because I was cold, but it was warm there, because I had probably like a fever and I just remembered feeling the worst I've ever I've felt in a long time so that moment I was so worried about this talk I mean I don't know how many people were there like 200 or 500 I have no idea lots of people in this room and obviously I don't know this yet but I've just seen the venue and it looks huge so I'm getting all ready and I'm still feeling super sick, don't know what I'm going to do. And we get there and we're watching the other presenters. I don't even want to, I barely even want to go around and explore like all the cool vendors and all the cool companies because I can barely like think. My head was so cloudy. It's just... It was just terrible. I don't know if you've ever been sick on like a vacation, but it's just like you're you're not in your norm. You're not at home. You can't just relax, and you have to be out and walking around, expending all your energy. 
you can't get better. So I'm sitting there watching these people talk, and then finally it comes my time to go up, feeling the worst I felt the entire weekend, stand up, call my name, and I start walking towards the stage. And this huge rush of adrenaline takes over. Like, I mean, completely takes over. And suddenly, I don't feel sick at all. It's like, all the preparedness for the talk, and just being so excited to be there and talk about something that I made and created, that I invented. And this rush of adrenaline takes over, and suddenly, I'm not sick. I'm standing on stage, I realize I feel great, I start doing my talk, and it was it was one of the best presentations that I had ever done. Seriously, ever. I don't know how well it actually went to everyone else, but to me, it was perfect. And I just remember the extreme change of my, my, the feeling of my body and everything and how when you need to do something like that, it's just like, you just push through it. You do whatever you can. I wasn't like, I wasn't taking any medicine, painkillers or anything like that. I'm, I don't generally take things when I get sick. I just kind of ride it out when I feel terrible. It's just the way I am. I don't know why I do that. So I went, got the talk done, answered a question or two, I barely remember. There's no video, just some pictures. And I got off stage and rode out the adrenaline for another 15 minutes maybe. And that was it. I was done. I was like, back to being sick, probably 10 times sicker than I was before because I just destroyed my immune system with all this adrenaline. And uh, we were there for another week, so slowly I got better and slowly the trip got better and I put that weekend behind me because even being sick with that at home would have been the worst weekend I'd had in a long time. And, yeah, that's what came out of it. It was on the internet, then Popular Science magazine, which, is, like, is still hard for me to fathom. And then this wearable tech talk. And then from there, actually, I ended up going to a wearable technologies fashion show in New York, uh which was really cool. I brought like an interactive poster down and I was there. I flew down for a day. That's another story in itself. I flew down for a day, uh, met my friend Tom and stayed at this fashion event and then basically went to bed and flew home in the morning. So that was quick. That was quick also. All these things coming from one small thing, this harvesting ring. And I didn't even talk about it, but basically it's simple. I designed a circuit board, I machined the ring, this is a generic heat sink, and there's a Peltier element underneath there. If I was going to talk about the technology behind it, I don't think there's time in this vlog. This is just a rant. And I just haven't talked about it before, and I thought you'd think it's interesting. I love using these things, and the opportunities from one small idea and actually following through with it. The number of people that said, you know, online on forums and things that say, oh, I had that idea too. I just didn't do it. Yeah, I know lots of people have lots of ideas all the time. All people have are good ideas, but it's the execution that gets you where you want to go. And this totally pointed me in the right direction. So, that's my story. No small video cuts, but I've got the pictures. And I feel like I was like Tony Stark. That's what I always say when I see those pictures. I felt like a million bucks. I just felt good. I felt like I looked good. And it's just a great memory. And, I, and from there, I just told myself like I wouldn't 
come off of that wave of progress. So, I don't think I have. It's just this was such an extreme event in my life that it's hard to compare to it. Anyways, I've actually been waiting for the moon to come up over the horizon. I think I'm going to go take some pictures of it. It's like 12.30, but I know it's... No, it's only quarter after 12 right now. It's coming over the horizon at 12.30. And I'll finally get the pictures I wanted to get. This is my talk. You can learn more about this. I'll put a link somewhere in the description, maybe. And I have a couple other videos. I haven't actually done a video on this explaining it. Strange, I know. And I've been planning to make all this stuff publicly available so people can make their own. It's not cheap, but it's a fun, it's a fun experiment, and a lot of people think they're brass knuckles. I don't know why. People immediately go to weapons. Anyways, let's go take some pictures. Hope you enjoyed that rant. And, yeah, that's it. So the reason why I know the moon's about to come up, it's not just like something people know, I don't think. Some people, yeah. I'm using this cool app that like, come on camera, so there's the moon. I think it's actually over here, but anyways, it's just about to go over the horizon and it tells you when. So just coming up over now. Should be going right through the city and that's what I want to capture. Let's go.